Oh hey, didn't see you there. Just getting my badass workout on. And that got me thinking about other lady badasses, particularly in gaming. And that's what today's video is about. Top five badass women in gaming. That was a lie. This video was suggested and selected by my patrons. My badass patrons, which you should totally be a part of. Also, I don't go to the gym. This is my friend's apartment gym. Anywho, it's important to know that this is my favorite badass ladies, and this video will be riddled with spoilers. That said, back to your regularly scheduled program. Number five. I like women who are aloof, bitter, have a fuck you attitude. Beat ass, tear ass up, eat ass, kick ass. They're all about it. Now, as a villain lover, I like characters who lack empathy, compassion, and heart. I like characters who drift into the darkness, not save them from it, but there is an exception. Aqua from Kingdom Hearts, Birth by Sleep, and Forward. Aqua cherishes her friends more than anything else, and that's clearly shown from the beginning as she made them charms, wayfinders, so they'll always find their way back to each other. Later, Aqua is asked to keep an eye on Terra, one of her closest friends, as he seems to be leaning into darkness's tender embrace. She chases him down throughout all the lands, her faith being tested when Maleficent says he willingly helped remove Aurora's heart. But still, she believes in her friends, even running into them and trying to get them all to return. Despite her being a Keyblade Master, her cherished companions blow her off. And you know, that's not an easy feat to stand up to your friends. Which leads us to a solidifying reason that she is a badass. It's not about her abilities to destroy the unversed or in fragmentary passage, heartless. It's not about her graceful playstyle, flawlessly weaving her magic and keyblade attacks into killer combos. No, it was her great and noble sacrifice to save a friend. She gave up her spot in the world of light to a corrupt Terra, believing that he still had a chance to seek the light. She's further pushed as a badass while in the realm of darkness for what felt like the longest time she was alone, fighting off Heartless and herself. It was watching depression play out, Aqua gassing herself up, simultaneously dragging herself down. But you see her fight and never give up. I know, self-sacrifice and all that jazz is kind of common in JRPGs, and Kingdom Hearts is all about corny friendship. But this was a relationship in the cheesy series that actually felt real, and that's why her sacrifice was not only so impactful, but badass. Number four. I don't know many people who'd pursue an opera singer who just lit an entire opera house aflame, alone. But I do know Aya Brea from Parasite Eve. How can I talk about badass ladies and not talk about this game? Real quick note, I've only played Parasite Eve, not its sequels, yet. Now, I need y'all to imagine we're in an everyday world. There's no magic, this is real life, we have science and shit. You're a rookie cop and literally see a woman mutate into nothing you've ever seen before in your life. And you only have a pistol to start. And yet somehow you end up fending off this corrupted woman. Oh, and did I forget to mention you're fighting all sorts of other mutated freaky animals? The uterus on this woman is unreal. She took destiny by the balls, man. And she was like, all right, I'm gonna do this. She's gonna be the one. In fact, she is the only one who can get near the deranged woman known as Eve. Parasite Eve. Eve can make people spontaneously combust, but not Aya, as her cells are special. Also, battling Eve on a carriage driven by a flaming horse? You don't get more hardcore than that. Listen, I'm gonna be real, if this destiny was thrusted upon me, I'd let the whole goddamn world burn. Shit, I'd probably team up with Eve. Parasite pelvic, hell yeah. But no, like, Aya took the side of humanity instead of microchondria, but learned to embrace her inhuman traits. Pursuing a parasite mother and mastering mitochondria lands her a spot on being a certified badass. Number three. When I hear about badass women in gaming, this character's never mentioned. She's criminally underrated, and she quite literally holds the weight of the entire world on her shoulders. And no, I'm not talking about 2B. Rose from The Legend of Dragoon. A cold-hearted, a distant woman in dark blue armor who has been gifted immortality after the Dragon Campaign, a war that freed humans from Winglies. This war was 11,000 years ago, and it was 11,000 years ago she watched her friends and lover heroically die. However, just because the war ended didn't mean the greatest threat of all disappeared. The Winglies separated the God of Destruction's body and soul, the moon that never sets that harbored the body, and the leader of the Winglies, Melbu Frama, harbored the god's soul in a magic crystal to enhance his power. 
However, when he fought Zeeg, a fellow dragoon, and Rose's lover, Zeeg shattered the crystal and the god's soul escaped. Every 108 years, a new moon child is born, when the moon that never wanes glows red. The moon child has gone down in legend as the one who will bless the world, create paradise. On the other hand, it also means that the black monster will appear, a creature that loathes the moon child's sacred light and will seek to kill it. What does any of this have to do with Rose? Well, the god of destruction soul that got lost is the moon child, trying to reunite with its body. And the black monster? This hideous figure cloaked in black flame? This demon that slays all who come in contact with such a phony angel? It's Rose. Rose is the black monster. Rose is the hell spawn who lived the past 11,000 years of her immortal life slaying innocent children who the god of destruction possessed. She wiped countless cities and towns from the map as anyone who comes in contact with the moon child later becomes its thralls. And she laments her actions in silence, having no one to rely on but herself. She knows the dark secret of the moon child that is praised worldwide while she, the black monster, is made to be a devil by the same community she saved. Rose is a goddamn unsung hero. She travels with Dart, the main character whose goal is to literally seek revenge on the black monster who destroyed his hometown. She traveled with someone who unknowingly hates you. And more so, Rose also travels with Shauna, the new moon child, someone you have to kill and who Dart loves. Thankfully, when it all comes to be revealed, and as corny as it was, her traveling companions, her friends, still accept her and understood her pain. Dart and company insisted they fight by her side so she didn't have to go through it alone any longer. And I'm grateful Rose finally got her relief and her painful but satisfying ending. Carrying the weight of the world by yourself for 11,000 years is no easy feat. And that's why Rose is a badass. Number two. Spite. It's not the best quality, but it's a quality I like. And there's nothing like a spiteful bitch on a quest for vengeance. Velvet Crow from Tales of Berseria. Now, Velvet wasn't always this demon-eating demon, scantily clad, cold-blooded bad bitch. Nope. She was a wholesome lass who loved her dear sick brother and was being taken care of by her brother-in-law, Arthur, or Artorius. Things were doing alright, and as long as she had her family, she was going to be okay too. Until the Scarlet Knight. Her dying brother was murdered by Artorius. At that moment, she swore vengeance. The entire game is her chasing Artorius down. She is persistent, unkind, savage, and doing whatever it takes to bring this holy figure to justice. Her justice, anyways. This tale could easily be related to Berserk. Guts, the rugged black swordsman chasing down the angelic figure in white, Griffith. It isn't until Velvet meets Lafayette 2.0, someone who reminds her of her younger brother, that her cold exterior is broken through, revealing her former and kinder self is still intact. I also like that Velvet is one of the few Tales of characters who isn't a goody two-shoes. Her motives are personal, caring less about how it affects those around her as long as she meets her goal. In conclusion, we stand a badass with resolve, bloodlust, and a soft inside. Honorable Mentions there's clearly a lot of badass women who deserve to be highlighted, but I can only make this video so long. I already struggle keeping you attention lacking people interested. So, quick rundown. Bayonetta. I feel like I'd get in trouble if I didn't mention her at least once. She's a sexy witch with guns on her heels and she kicks ass. There's really nothing else to add. 2B and A2. Sexy android women who carry the weight of the world. 2B trying to fulfill her painful role while A2 is fighting the system, man. Senua from Hellblade Senua Sacrifice. If I was trying to do a more objective list, she would be on there. She struggles with psychosis and goes to hell anyways to save a fallen lover. It's no easy feat battling demons and your own crippling doubts. And lastly, one of my favorite variations of the legendary and iconic Princess Zelda, Tetra from The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. I love her because she's not only a pirate, but a captain. She don't take orders, she gives them number one. And finally, this last badass woman should be no surprise to anyone who follows me or this channel. Now, Zelda used to be my favorite video game woman of all time, but then this lady came along and took the cake. She reminds me of myself, mainly how I talk, and here's a sample of her angelic and eloquent voice. Vice, you dumbass! 
Start making sense, you rotten book, or you're gonna be sorry. Maybe I'll rip your pages out one by one, or maybe I'll put you in the goddamn furnace. How can someone with such a big, smart brain get hypnotized like a little bitch, huh? Oh, Shadow Lord, I love you, Shadow Lord. Come over here and give Vice a big, sloppy kiss, Shadow Lord. Now pull your head out of your goddamn ass and start fucking helping us! That's right, Kaine from Nier. Ah, voice actress Laura Bailey killed this role. That beautifully articulate clip is actually the first thing you hear when booting up Nier. And I hate to say this, but this is what solidified her for me. She's done plenty of other badass things that are more noteworthy than her potty mouth, mind you. But seeing a woman who spoke like I did, this was a moment of representation matters to me. Let's flip back to Rose real quick. She's cold and distant like Kaine, and you bet your ass she's the type of woman to say fuck. But she never does. Even Aya chasing down Parasite Eve, seeing the alligator morph into whatever the fuck you want to call this, she had to say fuck. This scene right here looks like she wanted to say, oh fuck, but she never does. Kaine broke that motherfucking barrier and said what needed to be said, and for that, I love her so much. Now to more worthy notes to why she's a badass. It's important to know a little history of my girl Kaine. She was born a hermaphrodite and was ridiculed for it. To make herself at ease, she had a fondness for clothing that highlighted her more feminine assets. The only person to love her as she was, was her foul-mouthed grandmother, Kali. However, a shade named Hook killed Kali and wounded Kaine. The only way to survive was to fuse with the shade. As if she didn't hate her body enough, her left arm and leg were now a shades. Being what she is, Kaine is outcasted by the villagers and forced to live a lonely life of vengeance for the shade Hook. From fusing with the shade, she can now understand them. And despite this, Kaine still hates them all, constantly killing them with the shade's power. Even with all of this, she battles for her life and slowly opens up to the motley crew she ends up tagging along with. Like most remote characters, they have a softer side. And while Kaine doesn't like to be called out on it, it's always refreshing to see a new angle. You see her relate to Emil, a boy who is experimented on and is self-conscious of aspects of himself, much like her. She happens to care so much for her new friends and is willing to sacrifice herself so Nier can achieve his goal of saving his daughter. In short, Kaine's good fucking shit. And there you have it. Top five favorite badass women in gaming. I figured if I train hard enough, I too can become a bitter, heartless, and cold-blooded woman. Well, you know the drill. Leave a comment in the comment section below of your favorite badass woman, and I'm gonna stop tearing up my muscles for this video now. Thank you so much for watching. Top box is more reviews like this, and the bottom box is my Let's Play channel. And if you wanna be a badass, consider subscribing to my Patreon. Okay, love you lots. Goodbye.